Right. Okay, I don't usually do this sort of thing, and I will put um, Gas King's link in my description. This is just a video of his, but um, the only reason why I'm doing this video is because I'm subscribed to Gas King's, by the way. I'm not trying to steal his content or anything like this, but I was watching this video. It's just recently uploaded, and I... This is beyond me. Illegal cars banned in America, all right? Just that, that title is enough to piss me off. In New Zealand, you can literally drive and own any vehicle made. Any. No vehicle, nothing. There is no vehicle on the planet that is banned in New Zealand. Not one. And yet, I mean, this is... And it's all because they're too fast. Apparently some of them aren't safe enough. This... So stupid! What the fuck? Like, I can No! 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 I just... Same thing with Oz. I'm pretty sure in Australia, you can own any car ever made. Doesn't matter what year it is, what the health and safety regulations are, you can own it. You can have it. Like, I... Just, mm -hmm. Wait, the first car you see... The first car you see is one of the most popular cars in the world. And it's banned in America because basically it's a drift car. Oh, I mean... Okay. I'm a car person. Okay, I love cars. I can't get enough of them. I've grown up around them. In fact, actually, I've grown up around British cars. The first car, to my memory, that I can remember was a Mark II Mini. And then, what was it? My dad had a Mark IV Cortina. Then we went on to... What did he have after the Cortina? We had... No, wait, no. He had the Murray Minor beforehand. But anyway, like, I'm just... Don't worry. I'll, like, the, all the credit, all the credit goes to Gas Kings. I'm just fucking... This is... Why ban cars? Why ban them? There is no purpose in banning cars. At all. Like, it just makes people want to buy them and have them. It's the same with weed. Why make weed illegal? It's only a danger to stupid people that use it wrong. And it's really fucking hard to use weed wrong. <laughs> I can't. Oh my god. <sighs> right. On to the Gas Kings video. The United States have missed out on a lot of automotive greats due to not being signed into the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe Standards, which is like a general blanket of standards what cars should be built to. But, oh no, said USA, we ain't signing up for that. Instead, they made their own set of motoring <laughs> See, this is another thing that irritates me about the Americas. You can strip down and make a 5,000 horsepower V8 Strip down the body completely, you know, just completely remodel the entire car, remove all of the interior, put a roll cage in it, and chuck a gigantic V8 into it, and that's safe enough to drive on their roads. And yet they won't allow a four-cylinder turbo. Where's the fucking logic? Like, most of these guys that do these cars up, that do the brakes, they do the suspension, they actually make the car safer by replacing the brakes with Brembo's slotted and fucking, and, and drilled, like, slotted and drilled brakes, like rotors, as well as upgrading the calipers, getting ceramic disc brake, getting ceramic pads, coilovers, everything that they do to the cars, especially Jap imports. They make the car physically safer by doing all of that stuff. Like, they make it safer. 
But at the same time, they do increase the performance, but they make it handle better. And it's illegal. You can literally drive basically an entirely rusted out car with a brand new V8 in it and an upgraded diff. Even if it's like, you can chuck a five, like even over a 500 crate motor in there. A 545, for example, a 542. You can chuck one of those into an Escort, for example. That is if the Escort is allowed in the country. But you get the idea, like a car the size of a Ford Escort, you can truck a crate motor into it, the car could be completely rusted through, and you'd be allowed to drive it on their roads. And yet, you can't drive... A car that's had all of the all of the suspension replaced, the diff replaced, the motor fixed, and somewhat upgraded, steering replaced, sway bars, suspension, coilovers, brakes, you name it. You could have all of that shit fixed. And it still wouldn't be legal in America. Okay, okay. Hmm. Actually, to my memory, there was a model of the Honda Accord that isn't legal. Honda Accord. Accord. I just With safety and emissions classed as NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. Not only do Nurtza and Epa set the rules, but they have also gone one step further and criminalised the possession of any vehicle into the US. So if you're thinking of doing a sly one and importing your favourite band model, you could face a long stint in prison. Recently, someone tried to illegally own a Sylvia S15, got busted for importing it, and is now facing a 20-year prison sentence and a $250,000 Okay, with the standards that they have for these cars, all right, and what they, the legal standards for cars, I can understand having standards for vehicles coming into the country. I can understand that. I get that. But having a 20-year penalty for ordering, like, getting the car shipped, 20 years for a car, 20 years for a car, it, $250,000? Mmm! Mmm! No! Oh, if it's not American! It, oh. It's basically just stating if it's not American made, you can't fucking have it here. That's why I love living in New Zealand. Like, not only are we multicultural by people we're multicultural in you know all aspects of it car culture fucking religion anything you name it we have it here because we're open to it <laughs> we fucking love everything here i'm not being racist but asian drivers kind of scare me the only reason why they scare me is because they're not focusing on the road. They're looking at everything else because they're tourists. But that's, you know, we accept everything. Actually, no, talking about Asians, though, they are fucking incredible drinkers. <laughs> Holy shit, some of them can drink. Really funny, too. But yeah, like 20, 20 years. 20 years? For shit. For getting an S15. Look. One of those. Those things stick to the road like shit to a blanket. And he got 20 years for getting one of those. Fine. So the main reason that the Nissan S15 is not on the streets of America is because of this 25 year rule. 
unofficial reason is because they don't want people turning into Ken Block, hooning it on the street sideways when they already have that problem with Mustang drivers. So let's crack on and see what other cars they put on the Nurza American band list. The Renault 5 Turbo. It was the original boy racer car for me back in the day, but now it's become a bit of a cult classic and collector's car. However, you wouldn't see one of these high performance hatchbacks on the street of America. As soon as it was launched, the NHTSA banged it straight on their naughty list, as it didn't conform to their strict guidelines with it being made for the European market. Such a shame. Sorry US, you missed out there. Another one with a banning order is the 1994 Toyota Supra. Well, I've seen loads of Supras in America. Wait, wait, wait. It was only the 1994 model that was banned from import to America due to its emissions and not being fit enough to pass regulations. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, no. All right. Mm. Okay. Let's try to figure out the amount of Supras that were built from one year to another that had the exact same body shape, same running gear, same engine, and they're saying that the one year of Supra was banned due to emissions and other safety features. Now, it was up till about 97, 98 for the Supra, right? Before then, they kept the same body shape for about five years. They may have tweaked the diff a little, fixed a wee few like a wee few issues with the like with with the running gear, possibly the block, but it was pretty much the same thing. You know. And they banned one year. One. Out of five-ish. You know, around that, around that. Go, they were just too quick and would outrun the cops as the imp- Not meaning that as all Americans, by the way, you know. Just their governing bodies. Ports from Japan were easily tunable and thus were banned. If you're having trouble finding a 94 Supra built for the US market, don't worry, it was only that model year that was actually banned, so go get yourself a different year. Easy! God, that sounded good. This! The Lotus Elise. There are a lot of cars that handle incredibly well, mm -hmm. especially road legal cars. The Mini, for example, was in Bathurst, right? It was actually in street, like in races with the likes of Mustangs, Falcons, Commodores, Nissans, Mazdas. On corners, because of the Mini's low center of gap, like the center of gravity that it has, low center of gravity, it was able to get in and out of corners way faster than any of the other cars. Obviously, on the straights, all the other cars would catch up with it. But you have a 1300 twin car block in a car that weighs less than 900 kilos. You know, that thing's going to be pretty damn quick. This, on the other hand, handles better than the Mini. Far better center of gravity. Far, far better. Wider stance, you can see the stance on it. Like how wide it is. It is a purpose-built track car, basically. And it's banned in America for being too grippy or is it the fact that it doesn't have a roof you could chop the roof off a Camaro in America have all the edges 
unsanded. And still be able to drive it in the country. Most, like, you know, newer, updated Camaros, anything past 2007-ish, or anything past fucking the 90s, they had ni- they had airbags, right? 72 Camaros, 68 Camaros, 70... They didn't have airbags, and they're not illegal. Safety-wise, those Camaros are worse than that. And that's banned. Look, I know that there's a wider spectrum of issues with the cars, the regulations, what they've brought in. I'm being a little bit nearsighted, but, like, I'm just bringing in the basics of it. It's... This is a very touchy subject for me because I really, really like cars. I love cars. In fact, my dream car is a 1970 Plymouth Cuda four barrel, uh, six barrel, 440. And I would... See, that's something. You can have ridiculously powered cars in the country but you just can't use the power unless you put it on a track in New Zealand. If you don't have a track, you can't use the power. Or the legal permit and, you know, safety stuff and all that sort of thing to do a street race, which we have do. Well, we do have street races in New Zealand. Well, we did. We had one in Dunedin, but then it got banned because someone crashed on a hairpin. But... Um, yeah. Damn, that sounds good. The Lotus Elise S1. Though the Series 2 Federal Elise was finally legalised on the streets of America, the Series 1 didn't get the same treatment. And unfortunately, all of the Lotus Elise S1s from 1996 through to 2001 were denied. This thing I can understand because it doesn't have airbags. It is literally a purpose built track car. That's a pretty good doughy though. KTM Crossbow costs around $62,000, made of carbon fiber with an Audi engine. The extremely light Crossbow accelerates with the power of a motorcycle engine. Just 350 vehicles were sold in 2008. You could legally import one of these into the US if you agree to only drive it on a track. There you go. The 1993 Jaguar XJ2 S only had six examples that were ever produced, but that was enough for the NHTSA to ban them all from the States. The S model was designed to be a street legal version of the XJ220C racer, and the American officials didn't like the sound of that. The car's engine was tuned to produce a neck brake and 690 horsepower, and at the time that was pretty damn quick. It was dubbed the fastest car on earth at one point. Only one under strict conditions was ever allowed to enter the US. The other five remained banned. the focus no way the ford focus rs 500 you don't think of a ford focus as a street demon yet this one was built to be one however i don't think it comes with the flamer kit as standard the sporting focus with its inline five cylinder produces 345 horsepower and can reach 0 to 62 in 5.4 seconds which makes this focus not only deserve respect but a cult following and a US banning order. The I've got to look up Kuntash these reasons, 90. like the reasons why they've banned these cars, because I feel like I, I know I'm missing a lot of detail. Like, because it's quick. 
they'll allow a motorcycle that can do 0 to 60 in 1.75 seconds. There is a bike that does that, by the way. I can't name it. But they won't allow a Focus that'll do 0 to 60 in 5 seconds. You can have a Merge Lago. You can have an Audi R8 V10. But you can't have a Focus. Am I the only one that's seen this? Like... That's interesting. Wait, what the? Manual, thank you. Get those fucking fans going. I want my graphics card to cool down, thank you. Um, yeah, I just... <laughs> They'll ban cars, but they won't ban guns. It's... Ah! 1978 LP400S. The mid-engined V12 Raging Bull from the 70s was also put on the NHTSA list, with it being from Italy, too much prep for the European market. Officials took Humbridge and stuck it on their naughty list. Don't worry though, if you still want one, 25 years has now passed, so dig deep in your pockets, get yourself to an auction house, and make yourself bankrupt. Pretty much. Amazing. 2010 Alfa Romeo 8C Spider Roadster. No. As with any car making its way to America, there's them pesky safety issues for automakers to manage, the NHTSA. In the development of the Alfa Romeo Spider 8C Roadster, America was definitely not the priority. As a result, they were forced to miss out on the Alfa Romeo's greatest car of the 21st century so far. I think it's safe to say that the guys at the NHTSA did not like TVR whatsoever. But why? Well, Peter Wheeler, former owner of TVR, felt that airbags and ABS gave drivers a false sense of security and therefore did not install them in the TVRs which he oversaw the creation of. This meant it didn't meet the criteria. <laughs> didn't see them as a necessity. Now that's a driver right there. She'll be alright, mate. I'll get around this corner without flying off the, off the rims. It's all good. Don't need an airbag. There are some safety precautions that I do believe in. Um, that I do kind of, that, you know, out of, out of necessity for things. It, 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 airbags. ABS, I don't care about. Airbags, a little bit more important because... It's not only your own driving that you need to worry about. It's the other drivers on the road. Um, I'm in Dunedin. This is just an example of that. Like, It's just another flip side of, of what I was just talking about. The whole safety thing. Statistically, Dunedin has the worst drivers in New Zealand. Which is terrifying because Auckland is a shitload bigger. And... We have worse drivers than them. Makes no sense. Um, so, yeah, kind of puts the whole airbag thing in perspective. I'm a driver. Like, I'm, I'm a driver by profession. That's what I do. I'm a truck driver. And I see some pretty dumb shit. Like... Stuff as simple as not indicating when turning a corner, changing lanes, or pulling into a car park. That can seriously screw some shit up. Rolling through stop signs, rolling through fucking red lights. 
people have seen the effect of that sort of shit. And it happens on, you know, a 15-minute basis, not an hourly or daily. In Dunedin, it happens a frighteningly larger amount of times than what it would happen in other places of the country. Um, like, we've actually had in Dunedin where they've stationed cameras on certain light-controlled intersections, videoing how many people in a minute would roll through a red light. About one in five people didn't. Yep. We have some dumb cunts in our country. Of the nurture, and therefore Hold on, never I, I guess it's the same there in the other country. Soil. This means the Americans missed out on brakes such as the T350. We could own that here. Lightweight speedster that could hit you could have that in our country. Power in under five seconds. Tuscan, which featured with John Travolta in the film Swordfish, known for their extraordinary acceleration, and lack of airbags and antelope brakes, but the film made the Tuscan a world side car in America, but due to having no driver aids, banned. Joining the Tuscan and other banned TVR models was the Cigaris from 2005 to 2006. This stylish coupe offered 380 horsepower and weighs less than two and a half thousand pounds, so you can blast to 60 miles per hour in fewer than four seconds. And finally, the TVR Cerbera, which offered 420 horsepower and zero to 60 time in 3.9 seconds. It was just never built for US drivers in mind and therefore banned. The 1992 Porsche Carrera 911 RS 964 was also illegal in America, probably because the name was too long and complex for regulators to handle. <laughs> no, the real reason, and mostly for emissions and safety, is this lightweight European burner was never able to enter the country, and also it can hit speeds of up to 160 miles per hour, which was absolutely astonishing for the age of the car. Next up is this 1993 Lamborghini Strosec Diablo, built by a guy called Vittorio Strosec. I probably just absolutely murdered that. He found the original Diablo to be too subtle, so he set out to create a more balanced design, which he built for some extremely wealthy customers. Problem is, with all that tinkering and aero shaving, just look at them side mirrors and minuscule headlights, and you can see exactly why it shuns American safety regulation. So Mr. Strosec missed out on a big chunk of American rich dudes to buy his new designed Italian powerhouse. this NHTSA banning list, probably the most requested and most desired Jap import into America, there are even petitions going around to get this lifted due to these cars alone, the Nissan Skyline family. Okay, let's take a reliable straight six, add twin turbochargers and send the power to all four wheels. During the Japanese turbo shootout of the 90s, you had great landing in America, such as the Supra, RX-7, 3000 GT, but the Nissan GTR that was shut. That exhaust is that hot, it's red. That's awesome. Now, with some additions like the R33 GTR, which was able to produce some absolutely bonkers performance. Banned. The most requested, desired, and frustratingly banned car of them all, the Nissan Skyline R34 GTR. <laughs> Why are they illegal in the USA? Well, apparently for a number of reasons. Firstly, the power output of a Nissan Skyline R34 GTR Nismo is 280 brake horsepower on the standard GTR and up to 500 brake horsepower on the top of the range GTR. Not only that, but you can get a brake horsepower of around 1,000 brake horsepower easily if you tune them. Secondly, most of the USA police force cars are rear wheel drive whereas Skylines are four-wheel drive and would struggle to keep up with the GTR. This is a big no-no for officials. Finally, when you have empty roads, the Skyline will gladly bang out a top speed from 155 miles per hour to 200 miles per hour, depending what you've done to the car. Oh! Oh! 
Oh my god, that's awesome. Again, in the hands of the wrong person with the price previously being reachable, now they're going for silly money, but the NHTSA ended people's dreams for 25 years and banged it on their naughty list. And that is it, guys. So, yeah, Thank you so much. As you can see, this is a Gas Kings video. So I'm just I'm just doing this because it's it, it's 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 frustrating beyond all fucking reason. Is it you, uh, having safety regulations for your roads, like traffic laws, all that sort of thing? Sweet, okay, awesome. But if you can ban a full banger with a turbo and not ban a V8 that can push 3,000 horsepower. There are people driving cars in America with that amount of power. On the road. And you can't drive a four-banger with 450 horsepower. I just... You... I... You know, I... As I said, I mean, I can understand some of the rules, some of the regulations, and all that sort of shit, but... All the safety jargon... Fair enough. But as I was saying before, you can drive a rusted out car with a brand new V8 in it, and that passes safety regs. You can legally drive that. Go straight past a cop, you won't do shit. But you can't drive these cars. Yeah. Anyway, I'm done. That's my rant. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep going and going and going and going because... Oh, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Holy shit. can understand the skyline to some extent because there is a lot of shit you can do to that car especially the stock engine like just the stock engine alone easily push a thousand but you know some of those other cars the reno 5 turbo are you fucking serious that little car that little car is banned And you can... Yeah, I just... That's incredible. That's fucking incredible. Anyway, now um, this, yeah, as I said, as you can see, it is a Gas Kings video. I'm not trying to steal it. I'm not trying to, you know, make it my own. I was just doing a review on this fucking illegal cars banned thing. That's all it is. I'm not doing it on Gas Kings. I'm doing it on the video itself. Like the fucking, the content of the video. The video, not Gas Kings, okay? Just as a, just to remind people, um, I'm not trying to do that at all. I just watched the very start of this video and it got to me. So I had to, I had to do something because this is, yeah. In respect to this, I really do love my country. Like, the area that I'm in. Australia and New Zealand. I mean, a lot of people know what Australians do with their cars. They drop a massive V8 into a Holden Commodore or a Ford Falcon or a Ford Capri. Which is just fucking mental. Or a Suzuki microvan. And do ridiculous burnouts in it. Which is fucking awesome. Um, like we have the freedom to do that sort of shit. Not so much freedom, we just, you know, we're allowed to. Within controlled conditions, of course. But, you know, it's... Oh. All those Jap imports. 
banned because of very, very tight regulations. Seriously, I hope they get the ban lifted on the GTR. I really do. Because then there would be another Jap import that would be able to piss all over V8. And I don't like saying that because I love my V8. I really do. V8s are the tits. Oh, they fucking are. Oh, I used to fall asleep to the sound of my dad's Rover V8. And that was a British engine. Um, <laughs> didn't have any insulation or, you know, any sort of buffering between the underside of the car and the inside of the car. It was just straight sheet metal. <laughs> and it had a just a straight two and a half inch pipe from a set of extractors at the front and the pipe just went straight out there was no muffler there was nothing there was one one three foot bullet which is basically it's it, it's a cylinder that's just a little bit bigger than the pipe itself it's not a muffler don't get me wrong it's not a muffler it um expands it it expands, like, it gives, it's basically a baffler, it baffles the sound a little bit, but, um, oh, how to fucking explain it, I can't explain it. In all, it was basically just a two and a half inch pipe straight from the engine to the back of the car. And it sounded incredible. And then there was my dad's Vauxhall PC Cresta. That thing sounded like a, a low flying Harvard, Harvard, but anyway, I gotta go. Again, all credit goes to Gas Kings for the video itself. I just got seriously pissed off when I saw the banned list of cars in America. This is fucking stupid. Right. This be try out. Because I'm fucking getting irritated. And I will see you guys in the next video. Sorry about the rant. Gas Kings link in the description. Catch you later, because this is fucking, um, this is ridiculous. Like, actually, actually ridiculous. I, uh, yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> mm.